Hello everyone, this is Mikkel with Heli Direct, and today we're going to be talking about tail belt tension. Now, most helicopters, in fact, practically all helicopters today are all belt driven. Now, this isn't a discussion about whether or not they should be belt driven or if they're better or worse than torque tubes. It's not about that. What we are going to talk about is setting your tail belt tension. Now, general rule of thumb, you want to set your belt tension as loose as you can get away with. All right, let me say that one more time. You want to set your tension as loose as you can get away with. Why? Because after a certain point, making the belt any tighter just robs the helicopter of power and wears the belt out more and you're not actually getting any more performance. Now, what dictates how tight you should run your belt? Now, there are a lot of factors here. There are, you know, things like um, your flying style. Are you flying hard 3D? Are you just kind of sport flying, doing loops and rolls? Are you just hovering? You know, uh, what head speed are you running? Are you running electric or nitro? Is it a 700 or a 360? What size are the pulleys? What size is the belt? All of these things play a role in how tight you should run your belt. And generally speaking, me personally, I don't like uh, a lot of the recommended recommended ways of measuring belt tension, such as, you know, push the belt in with your finger and you should move in like three or four millimeters. I really don't like that. And the reason being is because depending on where you push on the belt, you're going to get different numbers. And of course, it doesn't work for all helicopters. So as you guys can see, I have my helicopters behind me. And uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go talk about each one. All right, guys, so as you can see, I have a number of different helicopters here, uh, mostly all 700s with the exception of one 550, all electric with the exception of one nitro, and we have a couple of three blades. Now, all of these helicopters have aluminum tail booms except the three blades. Why does that matter? Well, because depending on where you fly and the season, um, your tail belt tension may change with temperature. As the temperature drops, uh, aluminum contracts, which will loosen your belt. And as temperature rises, aluminum will expand and will tighten your belt. You don't have to worry about that with carbon fiber, but it's just something to keep in mind if you ever notice the performance of your helicopter change going from flying in the cold versus the heat. Now, let's talk about some general rules of thumb here. So generally speaking, the larger the tail pulley, the looser you can run the belt. Now these particular helicopters have three blades. So with three blades, that means more power, more torque, and in order to get good tail performance, you need to run the belt a little bit tighter. Now, fortunately, because these particular helicopters have large pulleys, you don't need to run the belt crazy tight to get good performance. Let's move on to some two-blade helicopters. Here we have a Spectre Nitro, a Spectre Electric, and a Blade Fusion 700. Now, these helicopters use smaller tail pulleys than what's on the SAB, and general rule of thumb, the smaller the pulley, the tighter you need to run the belt in order to get good performance. Fortunately, these helicopters have some guidance to compensate. So we have the Fusion 700 has a idler pulley and XL Power has some bearings that help keep the belt from slipping on the pulley. Now we have the Nitro here. Generally speaking, Nitro does not need to run the belt as tight as possible compared to electric. And the reason is simple. Nitro just does not have the power and the torque you know, that needs to be compensated for. Ergo, you don't need to run the belt as tight. And we have a 550 here. So 550, you know, in my experience, the smaller the helicopter, you don't need to run the belt nearly as tight. And this is just a matter of physics. Um, you know, relatively speaking, you get better contact. Uh, there's just less power. Um, Generally speaking, the smaller the helicopter, you don't need to run the belt crazy, crazy tight to get good performance. All right, so that's the mechanical side of things. Let's talk about flying style. So 
if you are doing hard 3D, uh, running a lot of pitch, a lot of cyclic, doing a uh, lot of rudder reversals, high head speed, then you're going to have to run your belt pretty tight. However, if you are just hovering, if you are running low head speed and you're just kind of flying around sport flying, not really pushing the helicopter too hard, not doing a lot of rudder reversals, then you can probably loosen your belt up a little bit. You actually might even get uh, some more flight time and you'll get better out of rotation performance. Now with all that said, how do we find the right tail belt tension for you and your helicopter? Well, this is going to be an iterative process. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, set your tension according to your manufacturer's recommended tension. Follow the instructions in the manual, start there. Go out, fly your helicopter, fly as you normally would, whether you're just hovering or you're doing hard 3D, whatever it may be, fly it as you normally would. When you land, what you want to do is loosen it up, loosen the belt up just a little bit, okay? And then you go up and you fly it again. And you keep repeating this process until you start noticing your tail performance really starting to suffer. Now, be careful with this. Now, you want to be, be careful and you want to be intelligent about this, all right? You don't want to be doing uh, pirouetting TikTok reversals two inches off the ground while you're trying to find when your tail performance is about to suffer. That's not what you want to find it. So when you do this, be smart about it, you know? Do whatever maneuvers you're going to do. Do it in a way that if the tail does blow out, you're able to recover and you're able to recover safely, okay? Now, once you find that point that, you know, the tail is just not holding and performing like it was before, then that's when you go back and you tighten it up to the point where you had good performance and then you tighten it up a little bit beyond that. And the reason being is because the belt is going to wear in, okay? And also, you just don't want to be on the ragged edge of, you know, good performance and bad performance. Because remember what I said about aluminum tail booms, you know, that contraction and expansion, things get cold. You know, you may have had great performance in the summer and then it gets cold and now your tail is terrible. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And also always keep an eye on it and pay attention. Because remember, this, by doing this, you'll get more power to the rest of the helicopter, to the rotor head. You'll get better auto rotation performance and you'll get longer life out of the belt and out of your bearings all right so hope this is helpful guys take the time to get the most out of your helicopter and thanks for watching Going direct.